too. I wasn't a perfect human being when I was a child. I was fucking crazy. I was crazy through most of my my young twenties. You know, like le legitimately crazy. Right. You know, and if you if you know you look at who you are now and who you used to be, and right. you know, there's evolution, but it, it has to be from yourself. You have to decide to do it on your own. It's right, very right, difficult. Right. You got to be objective. You're gonna have to probably do drugs. You're gonna have to fucking <laughs> find yourself for real. You need mushrooms. Well, that's what. No, what? That's you, what. You won't really get there on your own. No, what? That's what. Well, I beg to differ a little bit. I think that's what me being in isolation did for me when I was in jail makes sense because it's no like dog like you have to think you have to I mean after you after you blame the lawyers and God mm -hmm. and your parents you still got 43 days left to you fucking can blame, analyze yourself here's you know the deal man here's the deal with your life you can blame everybody for your problems in life right. and you might be right but, but can't change that right. what you can change is what you think and how you react and what power you give other people's actions and thoughts over you right you that's can, what i was saying as as from getting pissed off at them by f using that energy for yourself using that energy for positive shit using right. that energy to try to accomplish shit like that can either that could either drive you crazy or yeah. it could make you a, a better motherfucker person. Yeah. like and that's why you know i know that i that i brought a lot of shit on myself but I'm glad that I was able to use the time that I was in jail to say, dog, you can't keep doing this dumb right. shit, man. Right. You have to try to do something, be it, be it comic. And the reason that I even bothered to think that I could be a comic is because that was one of my survivals while I was in jail. I've always been this size. So I was the guy that if somebody did something or said something, I had something quick to say mm -hmm. that kept brothers smiling. Because, dog, that's a long time to be anywhere. So just a smile for that one day or, or like a laugh especially in jail means a whole lot more than just us talking and laughing here because dog it's a miserable existence it really is no not to say that I didn't deserve to be there but dog it's fuck it fucking sucks it's like don't let rappers fool you that shit sucks man it's nothing it's nothing hard about doing something stupid and winding up in jail it's fucking dumb it's really stupid to do something to wind up in jail and it's it's just fucking awful so Joey Diaz has the same story that when he was in jail making people laugh in jail is what got him into being a stand-up comedian right he would have they would have like show movies or something the movie would suck they'd say Coco get up there get up there and tell stories and he would get up there and he'd start making everybody laugh and that's like what what started him off on the road to being a comic well see I but then then the other part of it I also stuttered so what would happen is, like, if I said something that was slick, people would laugh. And sometimes I would try to talk and stutter and people would laugh. So either I'm cool. You right. know what I'm saying? So, but with that, with, with just that laughter, man, like laughter is something that I think that we as comics shouldn't take for granted. It's a powerful thing. Like if it, if it can help somebody get through jail, like la just laughing once a day, just like dog. It's that's very a, powerful. It's a very powerful thing, and I we don't think about it because it, it seems frivolous. It seems like oh, you're just laughing. You're silly. You're a, a silly person. Dog, it's, it's important for your health. It really, mental health also. It's like dog. Some some shit just fucking let it ride, man. Yeah. Like let it ride, and even with even with um what I'm doing as far as comedy, man. It's like. Dog, it's really cool to make people laugh. Like I've I've gotten to that point. I've been the angry dude, but now it's really cool to make people laugh, man. It's really fucking cool. Well, you, you're pushing positive instead of negative. You know, that's what it is. I mean, you, you have to find some shitty things in your life to figure out what you don't be doing, learn from your mistakes, and then you move on. Yeah, and just like, just like, uh, for instance, and something else with being in solitary confinement is, I'm not as concerned with what goes on around me as far as the, which which was that first statement that I was making as far as racism but we had to clear that up no I, I don't care I I'm a country music fan what I like of, that why, why do you like country music oh I love probably because I'm a drinker first but I like <laughs> I like country music I don't even know why though I what I, do I you like, like I like Dwight Yoakam I, I, I like uh like mostly all of it man like other than that country pop shit where you, where you got pop stars that couldn't make it as pop so they try to do country now. I think that's a little bit much. But other than that, like straight country, I love it, man. Well, I'm a big Johnny Cash fan, but I never even think of Johnny Cash as being country. Johnny Cash is like some weird white rap. That's the thing. <laughs> I say I'm a Johnny Cash fan. I wouldn't say I'm a country music fan. But yeah, yeah. I like Cash country music. music. Yeah. yeah. Toby like, Keith. Boy named fun. Sue. That's.
love of going on stage or of creating something. Sure. You know, when you think about the one thing that's the most satisfying, you know, outside of childbirth and in having your own children is creating. You know, people who don't create things, I think as a whole are way less happy than people who do create things. Yeah. I mean, I know dudes that make pool cues. I know dudes that make belts. They make custom wallets. And there's a something that they get when they're like, you know, I bought a wallet from this dude. And you, you buy a wallet from him and he sells you the wallet. And he made it for you and shit. Like, there's a smile that he has. Like, he created something. Yeah. He created a piece of artwork. And someone else is appreciating it. Wow, I love how you did this. This is, wow, this is awesome work. It's so clean and well done. He's like, thank you. And like, his effort and his, his creativity have gone into an actual object. Object. And to us, that's very, very, very satisfying. And then there's the comedy satisfaction that you get for performing. I mean, that's all we, you and I understand. I mean, yeah. we understand. I guess it's in music, it's probably just the same thing. You, you create a song, and then people love that song. That's feeling. Creating something. And when, what are you doing when you're creating something? Well, you're doing the same fucking thing. You're, you're pushing the machine. You're pushing it in your way. And your way is making people happy and, and giving people some positive energy. Well, yeah, and also, then they buy your DVD and there's an industry behind that. And they come see you at the clubs and there's, there's industry behind that, even behind putting gas in their cars. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a really, it's amazing how many different pieces are in place. If you, if you, if you take back, if you like, you know, zoom in on the idea of what is creation and creation is taking something from the nothingness and bringing it into the somethingness and so you sort of become the doorway for something to come from the nothingness into the somethingness so when you're creating you're actually experiencing a flow through from the infinite into the finite and that i think that is the feeling that we love so much is that sense of feeling that that thing when you're working on jokes and all of a sudden it goes from being a drudge to all of a sudden it's like holy shit you know, it's happening and all of a sudden right. you get sucked into this weird vacuum and, and you, you've written for like two hours and it feels like a second. You know, that that sense of being pulled into a momentary current where something's coming out of you that's clearly not necessarily you, that to me is like one of the ultimate, it is, it's the ultimate feeling. And I, I have a, the, you know, I think if you go by this idea of this attractor that, that, that McKenna talks about or this thing that exists in hyperspace, that it's, it wants to come through us into this universe. It wants to express itself through us. And um, I, th I think that's the compulsion that you're talking about. I think that's an alternative viewpoint, obviously. Um, there's the, the cynical way of looking at it, like, no, 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 no. It's a natural inclination that people have. Monkeys are curious. This is what we do. <laughs> yeah. We think about things, and every joke that you have is just, just accumulation of your life experiences, yeah. and you're figuring out a little bit. Congratulations, that guy's right? A dick. You're not tapping into the universal consciousness. We'll be fuck. right back. Sarah Palin's on the line, yeah. and we're going to have a nice little sit down <laughs> with the good. future president of the United States, maybe, huh? Who yeah, knows? well, let's hope he doesn't fuck anybody. That he's not married to by imaginary <laughs> rituals. Uh, you, the, the thing about it but is. But you know what I'm saying? The, the, that cynical point of view about uh, the idea of creativity. Um, yeah. There's something to that point of view, too. You have to address it. You can't always go hippie. And um, one That's, of the things I, that I, 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 ba I bounce back and forth. I don't think it is either, but it is a little. Um, I, bounce, I bounce back and forth with the idea of the imagination being uh, uh, almost like. Like when you when you have imagination, the imagination is the real force behind the the evolution. What imagination truly is is we think of it as like, oh, I can see things, I can work around problems, I have this idea. But when you imagine an idea, when you imagine a product, you imagine how to d d design an engine for a car, and you're the first, you know, you're Henry Ford or whoever the fuck made the first engine. Yeah. When your your imagination has this idea for this thing, and then you build it and design it, and boom, it's there. That thought. What there there was no thought of that before it existed. It's not that run, people were running around thinking of the car and yeah. I know what's going to look like. There was no thought of it. You created this, or it came to you. There was a something from nothing, something from from what is that? From the ether, something from these. Even if it's just these synapses firing in your mind, where is the, what is the signal? What is the root of this signal? To be so, you know. 
mathematical about it and say, well, it's just human ingenuity, and that's what it is. It's good old stick to itiveness, and you roll up your sleeves and you figure out this world. And well, that Henry Ford created a great thing, and you know who else did? And Thomas Edison, he was a great fella. He invented Get a bunch those of those neurons sweating. Yeah, you know, I don't necessarily know. It's it is possible that the imagination is something that is information that is out there, like the the idea of the Akashic records, the idea of uh, you know. Yeah. That there's shit out there, and then what we are is little antennas tuning in. Yeah, and that our when we tune into something, if we pick up this this signal for the engine, and someone f picks that up, excellent. Once that piece is in place, oh, and then it flowers and blossoms like like a yeah. Fibonacci sequence on a fucking uh, yeah. uh, a sunflower. You know, it all bursts out, you know, exponentially in certain directions, and then that starts creating more inventions with all which also burst out. You know, but all all of them emanate in the imagination initially. All of them have to be thought up. All of, all of them have to be created by the human mind. That's right. Or what the human mind can tune into. There's no way into this universe as a human, but through a pussy. And there's no for way... Now. There's no way for an idea to come into this universe except through a thought there's no way for an invention except to come through our mind our minds are the our minds are sort of the creative orifices through which all innovation every invention every idea comes it's through the human mind now if you want to think that <clears throat> someday you just wake up and you get in the shower and you get lucky enough for your neurons to fire a certain way where you figure out how to reduce the cost of making solar power panels and solve the uh, you know, the energy problem on the planet. If you want to think that that's The human race is stuck in a giant quagmire when it comes to our behavior and our thinking about our behavior. There comes a certain point in time where you have to pop the training wheels off and you have to recognize that all this morality that you've developed is good because it's good to treat other people good. It's good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. It's like a golden rule and there's a reason for it and that reason is that we're connected in some strange way that we don't totally understand. And unless you are good to other people around you, unless you're kind and friendly and warm and